are guides, we are kings We march in faith cause we believe we can Change the world to what it needs Stand against our enemies cause we can Yeah We are kings demanding change Cause we believe we can Black issues of black on black crime in your community Violence in your community, right? Why, why is it we hate each other? Alright, let, no, no, let's, let's deal with it. Deuteronomy 28, let's, let's deal with it. Read that, verse, verse 45. Do you believe in the Bible, Fabrizio? Okay, alright, listen, it's gonna be quick. Okay, you look like you gotta go to work. You just came from work? Oh, you got time, bro. It's Friday night, you got nothing to do. As a matter of fact, it's Friday night, you 19. I know what you're about to get up to. I know what you're about to get up to, Fabrizio. Read that. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 45. Hey, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. It, this is Moses in the wilderness talking to your ancestors. What's your race, by the way? Black. What's your father? From where? Honduras? Oh, look at this one real quick. According to the Bible, you'd be from the tribe of Zebulon. That's, that's your, your God-given nationality. Because if I ask you, what does Honduras mean? What would you say? No, 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 no. The, the definition of Zebulon. We really don't know. We really don't know what Honduras means. But watch this now. Watch this, Fabrizio. Watch this. Read that again. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. So God is saying all these curses, these bad things are going to come upon a particular nation of people till they be destroyed. Right? Read. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. God is telling you, Fabrizio, follow me, God is telling you why these things will come upon us. Did you hear the reason? What is the reason, Fabrizio? Because we broke, okay, we broke in the Bible. God has laws, statutes, and commandments. God gave the law, statutes, and commandments to a one nation of people, which is the nation of Israel. That's your nation of people. So Moses is giving a warning from God to your nation of people that if you don't obey these commandments, bad things will come upon them. No, you watch the news? You familiar, okay, so you familiar with the immigration crisis that's going on at the borders? Where, where, where the kids are being taken away from their parents and separated and all of that? It's, do you think that's in the Bible? You don't think so? Get 32, watch this. This is, this is a curse that's happening to your people, our people, to this day. And nobody has a, has a, a clue of why it's happening. But the answer is in the Bible. Now watch this, verse 32. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So at the border, is that not what's happening to our people? The, the so-called Mexicans, the so-called Guatemalans, the so-called Hondurans. Is that is that happening? It's, so, it's in the Bible. Why is that? Because you're God's chosen people. You're the people that this Bible is talking about, Fabrizio. Read it from the top again. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So let me ask you this, Fabrizio. Do you think those people will be able to see their kids again? 
Probably not, right? right? The Bible just said it won't happen. You're gonna long to see your kids again. So what? So here's the question: What are they gonna do with those people that they're holding captive? What do you think they're gonna do? They can't just hold them in there and just continue feeding them. Eventually, they're gonna do something with them. Well, that's why I asked you: Have do you have you seen these images? They have to do something with them for Brazil, right? So what do you think they're gonna do with them? Get 48. What else? Mm, no, no, that's that's a wasted investment. They're not gonna do that. They're, they're, they're smarter than that. Watch, I'm gonna show you what they're gonna do. I'm gonna show you exactly what they're gonna do. Verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. God says that eventually what's gonna end up happening with the people that they took, the, the so-called Hondurans and Mexicans, they're gonna make them servants. They're gonna put them up in the orange fields. That's what God is saying. And now, pay attention to the words that God is choosing. He called the people that they would serve a particular word. Did you catch it? Listen to it again. Read that. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies. What? God said they're gonna serve their enemies, right. Fabrizio. Right. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Believe it or not, God sent these nations against our people. Why? Because we refuse to keep God's laws. Read on. And hunger. So it goes back to what I was saying, Fabrizio. They're not going to just keep them in that pen forever. Eventually, if those people, our people that are locked up in those cages at the borders want to eat, guess what they got to do? They got to go out and serve. Read and for, they gotta serve for food. Read and hunger and and thirst. What and thirst? So no, it's gonna get to a point where if they want water to drink, they gotta go out and work for that. Read and in nakedness and in want of all things. Anything that our people at the border can think of that they may want for Brazil. Eventually, they gotta go out and work for that. Bring it out. Read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Because know what you're gonna see, know what you see is broken families, destroyed families, broken households. No, you're left with a broken and battered people locked up in cages at the borders. What is that? We refuse to keep God's laws. No, I don't want this sign. We refuse to keep God's laws, Fabrizio. Now let me ask you this. Do these curses, the things that are written here, are they happening today? They're happening, right? Right. What are the purpose of these curses to do? Verse 46, what are the purpose of these curses? I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you. It's fine if you don't know, I'm gonna show you. Read that, verse 46. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. And they, the curses, the evil things, shall be upon thee for a sign. What does a sign do, Fabrizio? A sign, what is a sign for? Like, for example, we are at Oakland Parkway and Northwest 40, 55, 50, 55 Ave. How do we know that? The signs pinpoint where we are. Right. So in like manner, the curses pinpoint who the Israelites are in 2019. Right. Because God said, prophesied that the Israelites would lose their nationality. Right. This is Bible prophecy playing out in 2019. Right. These curses were written out 4,000 years ago, but they still play a role today. So let me ask you this now. It's Friday night. You just got off work. You probably got paid. Oh, you get paid every two weeks? I'm sorry to hear that, bro. I'm sorry to hear that. So it's Friday night. It's Friday night. You got off work. What you going to get, to get up to? Be honest. What, what you going to get up to for reason? Huh? What you gonna get up to? It's Friday night, you're 19 years old. Just chill. Ask some questions. Chill and be on you, 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 you probably got some, you got probably got some. You probably go to roll something for dogs. Huh? Probably, right? No, let me ask you this. Is there a reason you do that? What's the reason? You just do it because? Not you. People around you do that, so you so you don't do it. Is what you're telling me. 
All right, I'm, I'm gonna bring it up. I'm gonna bring it up. I'm gonna bring it up. Watch this. No, you you just saw the, 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 that the curses is real. They real, right? So then this is real also. Watch this. Watch this. First Corinthians. The first Corinthians 360. Watch this. You got a girlfriend, by the way? Bro, come on, bro. You, you, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Okay. You, okay, maybe you don't have a girlfriend. You just got a, a, a girl you're dealing with. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. <laughs> First Corinthians 3.16, read that. Nope. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. You, you, know. you know why I say that, bro? I was 19 at one point, bro. Right. I was read 19 that. at one point, bro. But if that's what you say, we're going to leave it at that. But come on, bro. Read that. No, what? You used to. Bro, you 19, bro. What you mean you used to? I know you like girls. I'm not saying you don't like girls. <laughs> Read that. First Corinthians 3.16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God. So God is saying your body is his temple. Right. He says any man that defiles. What does it mean to defile something? Do you know? Say again. Go against it. Okay. Mess it up. Pollute it. That's the idea. You are right. You are right. You spot on. What are some ways you could pollute or defile or mess up your body? Smoking cigarettes. Sleeping around. That's another way you can defile your temple. Because God will mess you up with AIDS, and that's a curse in the Bible. Um, eating unclean foods. That's another way you can mess up your temple. But right now we're talking about smoking. God is saying that if you smoke that weed, you smoke that cigarette, he will mess you up. And I'm sure you've seen people that have been messed up from smoking marijuana. Now you say you don't do it, but you say the people around you do it. So watch this. Finish that up. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. God is saying, if you are caught up in smoking weed, get Proverbs 12 and 26 and Sirach 37 and 12. If you are caught up in smoking that, God will destroy you. And you best believe, hold that up, hold that up. Hold that up. You best believe God is a man that makes good on his promises. So you best believe if you are caught up in either smoking weed, sleeping around, God will mess you up. He does not fail to make good on his promises. And the scripture says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So here's the question for Prezio. What is going to stop you from falling into the pitfalls of America? You can say you're going to stay away from it, but here's, here's, here's the problem you're going to run into. Here's the, here's the problem you're going to run into. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Read that, Proverbs 12 and 26. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 26. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. The righteous, according to the Bible, is the people that keep the commandments, right? It says the righteous is more excellent or better than his neighbor. Read. But the way of the wicked seduceth them. The way of the wicked, meaning people that don't keep the commandments, seduces them. Now you mean, now let's think about that for a second, Fabrizio. You mean to tell me you are in a room with your homeboys. They all got ladies around in the room. And you mean to tell me you're going to say, I ain't touching not one of y'all. Bring it up. Oh, you ain't, you ain't going to do that, right? That's what the scripture is talking about. The way of the wicked, because you said you're not chasing women. You said you're not doing that. You're not, you're not messing with any women. But the Bible is letting you know, if you put yourself in that scenario, you will be tempted. And then you will end up with AIDS. You will end up with herpes. No, you shaking your head, but God will do it to you, bro. God will do it to you, bro. I guarantee you, bro. You gotta be real with yourself, Fabrizio. You will not sit in that room with all your homeboys and ladies in there, and you just gonna shake your hands and I ain't touching none of y'all. I'm stronger than that. You ain't gonna do that, Fabrizio. You ain't gonna watch your homeboys puffing the baddest blunt, and you gonna be the I am puffing not one of y'all. You ain't gonna do that, Fabrizio. I'm being real with you, you know what? Because we was in your shoes. We was on that sign, on that side of the sign. And we could tell you for a fact, it does not work. First Corinthians so, 10 and 12. First Corinthians 10 and 12? Yes, sir. So watch this. Oh, oh see me, you walking away now? All right, all right, First Corinthians 10 and 12. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. 
You got it? 10 and 12. Read. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Beware lest you fall. Read to verse 13. Verse 13. There hath no temptation taketh you, but such as is common to man. So what the verse is saying, the, the temptations that are out there for you are not temptations that any of us have not faced before. Right, right, so we right. can tell you safely from this side of the sun that we've been in your shoes. Right, right. And we're trying to reach you so that you don't fall into those traps. No, get Sirach 37 and 12. Sirach 37 and 12. Watch this. This is how you avoid those things because you will end up in those cases if you hang around those people. This is the solution that God has for you because a lot of times, a lot of times old people aren't bad people per se, but they hang around bad influences. You see what I'm saying? Bring it I, up. I can tell you got a good spirit on you. You're quiet, you're humble. But the people that you hang around can play a big part in whether you rise or fall. Watch this. Read that. So Rock chapter 37 and verse 12. But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. So the, the reason the Bible is saying that is because when you hang around people that keep the commandments, like these brothers here, and believe you me, you grew up in the Christian church? You, you grew up in the Christian church. I know you heard the hoopla that you can't keep the commandments and those type of things. Well, these brothers here keep the commandments. That's right. So you could be around godly men. And the scripture says, be continually around men like this that keep the commandments. Why? We're not gonna make you smoke weed. We're not gonna put you in those situations where you know, I'm gonna have to deal with this system. We're not gonna put you in those situations. We're gonna give you counsel. We're gonna give you real counsel and real steps to make your life better. Right. Because I can tell, I see a young man that's trying to work hard and make a, an upright living for himself. Right. So eventually you wanna have get married and have kids and those things. That should be your aspiration. Oh, you scratch your head at that one, right? Uh, <laughs> No, I'm messing with you, bro. I'm messing with you. But eventually, you want to have those type of things. So here's the question: How do you how do you avoid falling into those traps? The Bible has the answer. You read it again. The Bible has the answer for you right here, Fabrizio. Read that again. But be continually with a godly man, whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind. So God is saying that the friends that you keep around you should be according to what you what you want to do. Meaning, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know how you don't smoke and you hang around people that do. That's that's that don't make sense to me. That that's what but that's what the Bible is explaining. Be around people that are like you, the way that think the way you think. Because here's the thing: how many of your friends grow? Do all your friends work? They all don't work, but you work. You don't smoke, but your friends smoke. So clearly there's a disconnect between you and your friends. So watch this, Sirach 67. Clearly there's a disconnect between you and your so-called friends. I'm saying so-called because according to the Bible, the only way to get to know somebody is you gotta, well, I'm gonna let the Bible explain that. Watch this, Sirach 67. Sirach chapter 6 and verse 7. Yeah. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. And read it again. If thou wouldest get a friend, want a friend, Fabrizio. Read. And this and this doesn't go into just your homeboy. This can go into a wife. If you want a wife, read. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. Meaning you gotta put that person through tests, whether it's a wife or a homeboy. So see if they real or not. See if they're gonna tell you what's see if they're gonna tell you where you're going wrong so you can get back on that right track. I see I see you looking around for BJ. Your mind elsewhere right now? I'm not, I'm just asking. But real but in all honesty, that's what you gotta do to avoid the pitfall. So I'm trying to show you the right way so that you don't end up a statistic out there. Bring it up! This, this, you see how hard it is for us to make it up here. So well, why not join with people that are gonna fight for your people?
hard to serve God And why would I say that I'm a Jew with sound art? For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's sound man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.